Good afternoon. My name is Mike Carley, and I'm a partner solutions engineer here at StreamSets. And today I'm going to show you how to set up, configure, and operate the StreamSets Control Hub offering from the Amazon Marketplace. So I'm going to trust that the user watching this video is already a reasonably advanced user and has gone to the Amazon Marketplace and selected to deploy our offering from that location. So where we're going to pick up this video is from the instance type that we're going to select. Now, our documentation offers a minimum size recommendation for a control hub instance. In this particular instance, we're going to use the T3A 2X large instance type. It comes with eight vCPUs and about 32 gigs of memory, and that's generally about the recommended size. Now, it's important to keep in mind, too, that for this instance offering, that we're really deploying this from the Amazon Marketplace for the purposes of tests and development. If you have questions about going into production or you would like to productionize an instance from the AWS Marketplace, please reach out to you know, some members of your account team from StreamSets, and we'll be more than happy to, to help walk you through the, uh, the slightly more involved process of getting that, that instance production ready. Okay, so here in our instance configuration details, there's no real necessary requirements to uh, change here. If you have specific organizational requirements, let's say, for example, you have a specific network or a, uh, a specific subnet or something like that that you need to leverage, uh, please go ahead and do that. You don't need to use anything like an, an auto scaling group or any of the uh, any additional instances. One instance will be fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, click on add some storage. Now, 50 gigabytes is probably fair. You probably don't need much more than that uh, for your test and development instance. Depending on how uh, intense and thorough the testing process is going to be, uh, I don't think more than 50 gigabytes will be necessary. Part of the storage requirements uh, include some of the statistics and metrics around operating your data pipelines. Next, we'll go on to tags. Again, for this particular instance, no tags are required. It's not a requirement unless you have an organizational requirement to tag your instances. Go on to the security protocol. Now, obviously, for test and development purposes, your security groups might be a little bit different. But for the ease of demoing in this particular instance, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and configure all TCP ports open from my IP address. So here's my IP address. But what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and uh, use all TCP ports uh, from my IP address specifically for the purposes of demonstrating in this video. You'll see later in the video that we're really only using uh, 18631 and 18632. And really, it's just 18631 is going to be the main port that we're going to be accessing our control hub instance from. So with all that being said, we'll go ahead and review and launch. Go ahead and double check everything. Make sure it's as we configured it. Check the tags, make sure there's no tags. All right, we'll go ahead and hit the launch. Here we can see our instance is up and running. Already, we can actually see that uh, a public IP address has been provisioned. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the IP address and we'll copy that in and we will paste that into our address bar and we'll add in the port that we're going to be accessing the SCH instance on. So it's going to be 18631. Now, when I go ahead and hit enter, you'll see that there will be a connection issue. The HTTP request is going to error out. Let's go ahead and update our local Etsy host file. So we'll do sudo nano slash Etsy slash host. Go ahead and enter that or change that file real quick. So what I'll do is I'll take the IP address here and I will go ahead and change that down here in our Etsy host file. So I'll go ahead here where it says SCH trial. I will go ahead and put in our AWS provided address. Go ahead and delete the, uh, the slashes and the HTTP. All right. Now that we're all set, we'll go ahead and save it. Yes, we want to save it. And what I'll do is I'll, now that I've changed the Etsy host file, I'll go ahead and hit the refresh button, and you can see that we're automatically redirected. Password, which is admin at the organization admin. Go ahead and click continue. And then we'll go ahead and enter in the password for admin at, at admin, which is actually going to be the same thing, which is going to be admin at admin again. So go ahead and copy that page, and copy and paste that, and then we'll click sign in. And there we go.
We're now logged into our Control Hub instance, running in a Microsoft Azure data center. So this particular Control Hub instance comes configured with some additional pipelines, some additional organizations. And what we recommend is that you go ahead and read some of our tutorials, some of our blogs, some of our documentation that I mentioned earlier. So that way you can go ahead and, and take advantage of all the various configuration options uh, that your organization might find value in. Now that we've covered how to create and configure the virtual machine, let's go into some of the best practices of how to finish the Control Hub deployment and prepare it for organizational level use. Here, because I logged in as admin at admin, uh, what I'm going to do as part of the best practices is actually create another admin user. So what I'll do is I go here to administration, I'll go to users, and I'll actually create another user. So I'll create uh, Mike at admin. I'll go ahead and put in this. Do Mike at streamsets.com. And what I'm really doing here as part of the backup, the best practices here is I'm actually creating a backup admin user. So that way, in case anything goes wrong with the root admin that's provided during the course of the install process, I have a backup user that I can go ahead and, uh, and access to. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit save. And what will happen is it'll create the user and the username and password, the temporary password that I'm going to use to log in, won't be sent out. Uh, and it's important to know this because as part of the image that we provide you with, we have not configured an SMTP resource for you to send out the email with the temporary password for login. So what I'm going to do is since I've covered this, this part of the best practices, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change from the administration org to the sample organization that we've provided here. So what I'll do is I'll log out as the system administrator and I'll sign in as the admin at my sample org my sample org at admin. I'll hit continue. I'll enter in the password. And here you can see the sample organization. And here you can see the user, which is admin at my sample org. Now here, because we're, lo we're logged into another organization, it doesn't uh, come with the pre-configured pipelines as in with the admin organization. So what I'll do is I'll show you briefly how to create a sample uh, create a sample pipeline. So here we'll enter in the pipeline name, put in SCH test pipeline, put in a description, we'll call it version one. And here you can see, you can designate the pipeline type. So here we'll use a standard data collector based pipeline, but you can also create a data collector edge pipeline for any IoT use cases, or create a microservices pipeline. So here we have StreamSets Pipeline Design Canvas. This is the graphical user interface where you can design, test, and iterate your pipelines within your organization. StreamSets has provided a host of pre-made connectors. In this case here, you see a list of the origins that we have uh, ready to go out of the box. For simplicity's sake, we'll go ahead and make a really simple pipeline. Here, we'll leverage the random record generator as, as our origin, and then we'll go ahead and create a trash destination. So what will happen in this pipeline is Random records will go ahead and be generated, and then they'll go ahead and be deleted. And this is a very simple pipeline. We'll go ahead and make sure that the error records are set to discard, so that way any error records are not saved on the instance. And we'll go ahead and preview the, the pipeline. So we'll go ahead and hit Run Preview. And here you can see we've made our first pipeline. We can see that the random record uh, generator is actually creating records listed here. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and delete those records in the trash. And that concludes our video. Today we covered how to set up, configure, and operate StreamSets Control Hub. In other videos, we'll go on to discuss how best to connect StreamSets Data Collector to StreamSets Control Hub and show you how to further build out your data operations platform. Thank you for your time today.